During the sprint planning meeting, the team, product owner, and scrum master meet to determine what will be included in the next sprint. Now here's our product backlog. It should be prioritized with the highest priority items containing acceptance criteria. They should have a relative size and story points, an estimate of effort, and they should be sized so they can fit in a single sprint. The work to get the backlog and the PBI sprint ready is done in the product backlog grooming meeting. When given a well-groomed product backlog, the first part of the sprint backlog meeting is spent with the product owner answering any final questions the scrum team has about the highest priority items in the product backlog. The scrum team needs to understand each story's acceptance criteria. So they'll know when the work they do to implement the story will be done. And they need to be able to break down the story into detailed tasks, which when complete will satisfy the acceptance criteria. So the team's gonna select the highest priority items and move them from the backlog to their sprint backlog. And this signifies they will complete that PBI in the next sprint. Now, once the team feels that they have reached capacity, the team commits to completing the items on the sprint backlog during the next sprint. And the sprint backlog is then frozen. No more items can be added from the product backlog. The next portion of the sprint planning meeting, the team breaks down each PBI on the sprint backlog into small tasks, which describe how the PBI will be completed. So if we go to our previous sprint here and look at the task for this user story, we can see that there's quite a few of them, but they're simple. The tasks do not need to contain much detail since the PBI is well understood by the team. However, each task should have an estimate on how long it will take to complete the task. When the sprint planning meeting is complete, the sprint backlog here we have two sprints showing. The sprint backlog will hold the team's plan for turning the PBIs they committed to completing in the sprint into potentially shippable functionality in the product increment. Now during the sprint, the sprint backlog is used to track which tasks are in progress or completed. So going back here to the sprint that we're currently in, we can see that the tasks are defined and then when someone starts working on them, they go to in progress. And when they're complete, they say they're completed. The sprint backlog is updated each day by the Scrum Master after the Scrum meeting. Now this provides transparency to the stakeholders on what's being worked, what is completed, and what has yet to be started. And the team also uses the sprint backlog to manage themselves as each team member determines what items they will work on each day. As the sprint progresses, the PBIs in the sprint backlog are moved from define to in progress as the tasks start to get work to completed. Now when the product owner decides a completed PBI's acceptance criteria is met, the PBI is considered done and can be included as work done in the sprint review meeting. The team's work during the sprint results in a product increment containing the functionality in the PBI's completed in the sprint backlog.